Hello, my friends, and welcome to another episode of Little Liturgies, an online prayer to help you during your time of at-home or at-school learning. Let us begin in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. So, my friends, welcome to the last episode of Little Liturgies for this school year. I am amazed that we are at this point. I can still remember the first episode we did uh, back in September. So, to celebrate this uh, great accomplishment of all of you of completing another school year, let us call to mind, you know, any moments from the year that we didn't show kindness or compassion or gentleness and ask the Lord for his healing and his mercy so that we may end this year knowing that um, God has forgiven us and that we can bring this year to a close and start the summer with new and open hearts. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. And let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you great thanks and praise for this academic year and for all the blessings and graces we have received. Thank you for walking with us, helping us to show compassion, gentleness, and love to one another. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. So my friends, today's gospel reading, we're going to hear about how intense Jesus is. Like he is laser focused on making his way to Jerusalem where he knows he is going to undergo his cross, death, and resurrection. And so he's going to pass through a place called uh, Samaria along the way. And an important detail is to know is that the Samaritans don't believe that Jerusalem is the place uh, to worship God. They actually believe there was a place in northern Israel uh, that was the proper place to do so. So you're going to hear how they um, aren't exactly fans of Jesus at this point. Um, but nevertheless, we're going to get a sense of how intense Jesus is about making his way to Jerusalem. So the gospel reading uh, is from Luke chapter 9, verses 51 to 62. So 51 to 62. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When the days drew near for Jesus to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem. And he sent messengers ahead of him. On their way, they entered a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. But they did not receive him, because his face was set toward Jerusalem. When his disciples James and John saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them. Then he went on to another village. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, Follow me. But he said, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead, but as for you, Go and proclaim the kingdom of God. And another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at my home. Jesus said to him, No one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. 
the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So my friends, in the Gospel reading, we hear uh, like how Jesus makes his way um, through a Samaritan town and they're like, whoa, we don't, they, they, they're not fans of Jesus because they think he's going to the wrong place uh, to worship, G, uh, worship God. And then he encounters these three people who say, you know, oh, we want to follow you, Lord. But then they're like, oh, I, like, let me say goodbye to my family or let me go bury my father, which is all good and important things. But Jesus senses in each of those people a hesitation or um, like you got the one who wants to bury his father, which is a good thing. Wants to say, the other wants to say goodbye to his family, also a good thing. But there's even the one um, where Jesus gives that sort of cryptic reply where he says, you know, foxes, has, foxes, foxes have holes uh, to live in but the son of man has nowhere to lay his head, which I think means Jesus is sensing this person believes that he, if he follows Jesus, it's going to be pretty cushy. Like, you know, Jesus can do miracles, all kinds of amazing things. And Jesus instead wants to tell him, like, listen, this is, this is going to be a rough road, but you have to be determined uh, to follow it. And so, I would summarize these three interactions where Jesus encounters people who kind of want to follow him, but their focus is divided. They're like, oh, over here, or I got to do this, or I got to do that. And Jesus is like, no, like my mission is to go to Jerusalem and to bring about the salvation of the world, to help free humanity and all of creation from sin and death. And like for Jesus, nothing else in his life has priority over this. Like he's a single focus about that. And I appreciate that he's really upfront about that because he's like, doesn't want to mislead people into thinking this is going to be easy. Um, but at the same time, it reminds us, my friends, that Jesus invites you and me to also have very clear priorities in our lives. Like, what are we about? Well, when I ponder that question, my friends, I think what really drives Jesus in this reading with such intensity, an intensity that we see when Jesus is on the cross and has to really decide, you know, what is he going to do in this moment, the last moments of his life? is that Jesus wants to live a life of total love. Nothing else competes with this. And he asks us, invites us to do the same. He's trying to give us an example that says, like of all the things that you can do in this life, what could be more important than living a life of love? That's the focus he really invites us to have. Now, what will that mean in your life, my friends, and in mine? That will be unique for you and for me. Like, I am a priest, you are students. Where will you go after you, do stu after you graduate from school? You will do many things. You'll have all kinds of opportunities, especially as young people in Canada, like, you can do pretty much anything you want to set your mind to. But Jesus asks of all of the opportunities that you have, my friends, have a singular focus. Ponder. Think about what path in life will help me to live a life of love the most. Because as we can see, Jesus wants to model for us all the things that he could do. Like, he's the son of God. He can do miracles. He's charismatic. He's impressive. He says, nothing matters more than living a life of love. Now, to find this path, my friends, which we call discernment, is, you know, not easy, um, but this is why we pray. 
This is why we ponder the scriptures. This is why we consult wise people in our lives who love us um, to help us to find this answer. So at this point in your life, my friends, you do not have to know the full answer. That would be, it's not possible for people your age. There is still more about who you are that needs to be uh, revealed by God. But what you do know is that living a life of love uh, is your call in this life. And that's awesome. Like, <laughs> this, what better way could we spend our time uh, together here in this life than to spend it loving one another? So my friends, as we approach the summer then, I invite you to think about how you can live a life of love during the summer. You know, make sure you contact your friends, get in touch with family you haven't seen for a while. Um, use your free time that you have to, to be generous and helpful to your family and friends. As I've mentioned before, my friends, as young people, you have the unique ability to inspire others to a life of love. Like when you show the example of love, other people, my age, old people like myself, are like, wow, these young people can do it. Like, why am I not doing this? Like, this is your great call in this life, my friends. It's our, all of our call to live a life of love. So my friends, let us ask the Holy Spirit to be with all of you uh, during the summer to help you to know in your heart the, the call of love and to live it out with the same focus that Jesus had. And so my friends, let us present our needs and our concerns to God. So let us pray um, for in thanksgiving for all of the blessings we have received this summer, my friends. That was, uh, or pardon me, all the blessings we have received this year. Um, I know it was tricky at times, but you did very well, showed great resiliency, and let us give thanks for all the work of your family, your guardians, and your friends, and your teachers, and the staff at your school that, had, that helped us to have such a wonderful year. For them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray, my friends, that the Holy Spirit may be poured into your hearts uh, so that you may live a life of love this summer and be renewed so that when we return in September, uh, we can gather together again for little liturgies and learning. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray, my friends, uh, for those who are sick. Um, especially those who suffer from chronic illness or sometimes a broken heart or a sadness that God may be with them and help them. We also pray for all of our caregivers, whether it be doctors or nurses or family members or friends, that they may be sustained in their works of charity and love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray, my friends, uh, for the people of Ukraine. Pray that they may be aided in their defense of their country. We also pray for the conversion of all those who are aggressors against the people of Ukraine, that they may have a conversion of heart. And we also pray for peace in our world, that all peoples, all countries may recognize the shared humanity that God has given us and that we may strive to treat each other with dignity, care, and respect. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray, my friends, for our First Nations, Métis, and Inuit friends, especially during this month of celebrating Indigenous heritage and traditions. We also pray for Pope Francis, as he prepares for his pilgrimage of closeness to our First Nations, Métis, and Inuit friends around the last week of July, we hope that this time of encounter will bring about truth, healing, and reconciliation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let us pray, my friends, for our loved ones who have died. We know that they are in heaven now with our Heavenly Father, enjoying the beauty of, of everlasting life. 
We ask that they pray for us and that they, and that we experience their closeness, especially in a time of trial or difficulty. We know that all the angels and saints, along with our loved ones who are in heaven, who are praying for us, let us give, um, ask that those who have gone to heaven are at peace and that we may um, be supported by their prayers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let us together, my friends, say the words that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. So my friends, wow. I can't believe it. The year is almost complete and the summer is nearly here. Amazing. It has been, I'd just like to say, my friends, a great joy to spend time with you and to, you know, prepare these liturgies and celebrate them with you each week. I look forward to September when we will reunite once again. I'm, we're working on the logo. Thank you for everyone who has submitted suggestions. I've gotten like hundreds. It's awesome. I've been going through them, looking at them. I don't know if the logo will be ready for September, but it's, uh, we'll have to see how the scheduling goes. But uh, it's definitely something that's in the works, and I can't wait to see and uh, show it to you in September and to reunite with all of you, my friends. Be assured of my prayers for all of you uh, during the summer. Please pray for me. Please pray for Father Julian. And um, yes, let us pray for one another. But before we go, the last school of the week for this year. Who will the winner be, my friends? And it is St. Brendan. Yay! Congratulations, St. Brendan School. So, my friends, let us ask the Blessed Mother to pray for all of our students, teachers, and staff at St. Brendan's. But, of course, we ask the Blessed Mother to pray for all of our schools. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, my friends, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Have a great summer, my friends. Bye. I will see you in September. <laughs>